Hello, my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop with something entirely different. From time to time, I mention I have to burn a lot of firewood. I get all kinds of comments on that. Um, this is a unique situation, folks. This is not your everyday standard house with just one little fire, you know, wood heater type thing, or you know, a heater in the middle of the house, or or even a outdoor small outdoor furnace. This is quite different than that. Uh, let me give you just a tiny bit of background just so you'll understand. At least the last two people that owned this property went bankrupt here. And the reason they went bankrupt here was trying to heat that house. Now I'm not exaggerating. If you tried to heat this house with propane, you'd have to be a millionaire. And, and I'm not exaggerating. The reason I actually know that they went bankrupt was because the uh, when I closed on this place, the creditors were at the closing and they were there collecting their money. And some of them were, and the the biggest one was the propane company. <laughs> so, you know. Anyway, the the point being is that uh, you just can't heat this house the normal way. So then people make the next comment is, you should just stick to working on instruments and pay somebody to do your firewood. Well, you still don't understand. It's not that simple. First of all, it almost have to be a full-time person. <laughs> Nobody, you know, I don't want this to sound wrong because it's gonna sound like I'm something special. But seriously, there's a, I don't know anybody that would work as hard as I do to go cut all this firewood. I mean, you just can't imagine how much firewood I go through. People don't believe me when I tell them I go through a cord of firewood every three days. And they go, oh, come on. You don't, you don't know how much a cord is. Well, I do know how much a cord is. Trust me. I've had as many as seven working chainsaws here at one time. Right now I have three working chainsaws that I go out and cut with. Um, I take seven chains with me. <laughs> I'm not kidding. For my big saw, I take seven chains. The one that's on the chain and six spares. Uh, the one that's on the saw and six spares. And they're all sharp, ready to go. There's a lot of rocks here, so you can easily touch a rock. And so anyway, that's the reason for all that. But, but I go out and I cut for three or four solid hours, and all I do is cut, and I do it as fast as you can imagine. I'm not kidding you, I don't even stop for a break. I don't stop for a drink of water. I cut for three hours, just cut like crazy. Then we haul it in. Then maybe two or three weeks later, I have to do that again. <laughs> it's, I cut a lot of wood. So anyway, that's just to set this all up. And you know, and, and then you still say, well, you could still pay somebody to do that. Well, yeah, you could, but uh, you might as well just buy propane because <laughs> they're gonna charge you an arm and a leg to do this, to, to cut as much firewood and haul as much firewood as I need. So the bottom line is, if I don't do it, it ain't gonna happen. And if I don't do it, we're gonna freeze. <laughs> so there you go. And that was the reason, part of the reason, why I moved my shop down here. As, as I'm getting older, I can't keep heating that big house up there. Um, I will move into our, what we call our rental retreat presently. And eventually I'll just move in there and then we can heat it like a normal house. It's just a normal size house where this one is not. And uh, anyway, and then, but there is one other side thing that I do kind of like to cut the firewood because it just keeps me active. And with the advanced arthritis that I have, at least it keeps my joints moving to some degree. You know, um, it, it pretty much wipes me out for the rest of the day after I get done cutting. I pretty much just have to sit down and do nothing for the rest of the day and let my, you know, body heal f for that day. Then the next day I'm back at it again. But uh, anyway, so here's some clips on just uh, the results of all of that so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm dealing with. Well, my friends, it is 11.30 a.m. 
I didn't start on this firewood till about nine. So in an hour and a half, we cut that load there and this load here. And trust me, there's at least that much more back there to haul yet. This much wood, you know, doubled will last us about 14 days when it's really cold. That's about it. And then we do have this much wood on the ground already, too. The, this much wood here that you can see. I'm moving the camera kind of fast. And that wood over there. But that's all wood we have right at the moment. Plus what's on the trailers and out in the woods yet to pick up. So I wanted to show you how my dump trailer works. So And also the dump uh, feature on this uh, Ranger. I built uh, the dump on the Ranger also. Or I rigged it let me just say it that way it's it's the standard bed on the ranger and then i put a screw electric screw hoist on it and i'm trying to unlock the tailgate which i'm not sure i can right now i'm going to throw a few logs off of here to lighten up the tailgate a little bit there we go let the tailgate down and then all i have to do is press this button right here on the dash. I put this button in here. Just press that to lift it. There it goes. It's starting to lift now. It's just going slow. I guess the motor had to be running or something. I don't know. But I've, li I've dumped fairly large loads like this before. She's pulling it forward so we don't hit the stove. But anyway, that sure beats unloading it by hand. And you can see how it's working. There it goes. And then you pull forward a little bit, it just dumps it out. And then she can just push the button and it goes back down. It's going down just like it went up. It goes down really slow. But it works really good. Very handy deal. Now I'll back up the dump trailer and, and dump that for you and show you what that looks like. Well, I've got the trailer backed up where I'm going to dump it. As I've mentioned before, there is no point in stacking wood. All of this wood will be gone inside of two full weeks. It, it will all be gone. It, this furnace is relentless. <laughs> trying to heat this crazy house now on camera this won't work of course but this switch right here if i lift this this should just dump this load without any problem so i pick that up and you can see it lifting uh-oh i think we may have we may be low on oil or it's hit its limit because this is a big heavy load well i uh dumped off a few of the front logs here these were the this is where the, all the weight was we had great big heavy logs up here and we still do have a lot of big heavy logs up here let's see if it'll lift it there it goes lifting it right up no problem I have dumped some very heavy loads with this little trailer. It's amazing the power of hydraulics. Now we'll have to pull it forward just a little bit to get the rest of it out of there. So. Yeah, that trailer is worth its weight in gold around here for sure. This is load number two this morning. It's my wife backing that up, so she's pretty good at backing, but. You can see it, it's a pretty big load. That's a bigger trailer than a pickup bed. That's nine feet long and five feet wide. So that's a lot of wood. We're gonna go ahead and see if it'll dump it. Nope, it won't dump that one either. Just too much weight on the front. I'm 
I'm going to take just a few logs off the front and it'll probably dump it. That'll probably be enough. Hits. There it goes. Yep, that was enough. Just, just a few logs off the front there was enough to get it to get past the center there. This is a, it's a very strong dump bed. I'm amazed how strong it is. That is a very heavy load. And here's the rest of the second load, and you can see that's a pretty heavy load there. That's more than the Ranger could have held, I can tell you. That's that's a it's a wide bucket on the Bobcat anyway. And those are very big logs. You know, they're I wouldn't say they're they're not two feet in diameter by any stretch, but they're 20 inches and uh so they're they're big logs very heavy and uh i know because i loaded them and it's just now 12 20 so that second load took us less than an hour to go get and like i said we're just going to dump it on the piles here because uh this much wood will last me maybe a month if it doesn't uh, get freezing, freezing cold. But it's supposed to for the next seven or eight days. It's supposed to be really freezing cold. So who knows how long this will last. But it won't be here more than a month. I'll guarantee you that. Well, my friends, I hope you uh, enjoyed a little look at something different there. And um, now you kind of see the predicament I'm in. Um, I know many of you've got the answer right there. <laughs> You're gonna tell me what I should do, but but the bottom line is it's a huge house. We have it shut down. It's insulated as well as that house can be insulated. I've even furred out the walls to six inches and insulated with six inch batting insulation. Trust me, anything that's reasonable, I've done it. Uh, new, new windows throughout, new doors throughout, you know, pretty much everything and yet it's still that hard to heat because it's nearly 7,000 square feet of solid concrete slab and there's no thermal break from the outside so the coal just sucks in. It is hard to heat. Easy to cool. <laughs> I can cool that house for about what you pay to cool your car, you know. I mean it's really crazy how, how different it is to cool. It's very easy to cool. Very, very, very hard heat. That's the story. I'm sticking to it. Hope you enjoyed the video.